Mountains, you will find some really horrifying people on the deep and dark web. And in this video, I will tell you exactly which type of people you will find on the deep and dark web. Now we're gonna start off pretty light, but the deeper we dig in the horrifying levels of the deep and dark web, it'll get pretty freaking frightening. So make sure you stick around until the end of the video. Without any further hesitation, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get this video started. Level one of the deep and dark web, or the first people that we're gonna find on the dark web are going to be whistleblowers. Just to explain a whistleblower to you pretty simply, a whistleblower is somebody that worked at a pretty big company, or for example, somebody that saw something they shouldn't have seen. This person wants to anonymously publicize the information. They want to snitch. They want to snitch without letting anybody know who they are. So what they do is they go on the dark web and they start whistleblowing all of the information that they know. So one of the most infamous ones is Secure Drop. This one here is a open source whistleblower submission system that media organizations and NGOs can install to securely accept documents from anonymous sources. So for example, if you saw something that you feel like you shouldn't have seen, or if you have some very crucial information, you can report it to The Guardian, Lucy Parsons Lab, The Washington Post, The Al Jazeera Media Network, The Intercept, and Apache. And basically there's also like a whole bunch of different places that they sponsor, I guess. But for example, what Secure Drop does, no third parties, does not log your IP addresses, browser, or computer. Now, you have to take everything you see on the deep and dark web with a grain of salt. However, it does say it's open source. Open source means that anybody can check it and confirm that they are being truthful. So it does not log your IP addresses according to them. It encrypts your data and it protects against hackers. So that's pretty cool. You know, this is one of the common ways that people release information on the deep and dark web. The African leaks, Afri leaks, blowing the whistle in Africa. It's basically the exact same thing as Secure Drop. They're just telling you here to like use Tor. Don't use, you know, Google Chrome. So I'm using Tor right now because I'm browsing on the deep net. I wouldn't want to ever browse in the dark net with a regular browser like Google Chrome, like Firefox and Safari. No, I'm using the Tor network because I want to remain as anonymous as possible. And I'm also using a VPN. That's basically whistleblowers. If you have some information that you want to publicly share and you don't want your identity to be compromised and your entire life, your family's life in jeopardy, then maybe you want to use a whistleblowing platform. Now, I don't condone the uses of the deep net. However, there are some instances where where there needs to be some whistleblowing. Some governments can be corrupt, some places can be corrupt, and there needs to be some level of power to the people where the people can speak without being silenced and thrown to the side. It's good that these things exist. However, I have to do my part here and not condone any of the illicit things on the dark web. There's a lot of scary things that you'll find on the deep net. And if you stick around till later on in the video, you'll see exactly what type of stuff you will find. I'm gonna be showing you guys all websites in this video, all types of websites. So you're gonna be seeing what the dark web really, really looks like. It, it gets pretty freaking dark. The next type of people that you will find on the dark web also in level one are hackers. Hackers on the dark web are everywhere. The question is, are you going to get hacked by them or are you trying to do some hacking? There are two different types of hackers. There are hackers that will do stuff for you and there's hackers that will basically trick you into getting you hacked and losing all of your identity, getting your entire online identity compromised. So hackers definitely reside on the dark web. Nevertheless, this part of the video over here, I'm going to be focusing on the hiring a hacker segment. Now I don't condone hiring a hacker. I believe this is a scam. I believe if you hire a hacker, you're just going to send over the Bitcoin and you're going to lose your Bitcoin because what do we know about Bitcoin transactions? Say it with me. We can't get Bitcoin transactions back, but taking everything with a grain of salt, hire a hacker online, professional hacking services. Hire a hacker for Facebook, email, web database, or phone hacking. We are a team of highly skilled professional hackers that is able to hack any social accounts, email accounts, phone, websites, and databases. 100% guarantee of privacy and confidentiality for all of our customers. Hmm. Now, apparently these are their reasons for hiring a hacker. If you hire a hacker, you always be worried of losing your money. Losing your money is the way they put it, but they're trying to say losing your money. We won't keep a cent if we can't do our job 100% refund if job is not completed. Now, I don't believe that. I don't believe anybody ever sends their Bitcoin back. <laughs> Once you send Bitcoin, it belongs to them now. It belongs to the address that you send it. That's how the blockchain works. There is no person to report a complaint to. Now, some people think that's really bothersome but some people find that really freeing. You know, nobody wants people to control their money. However, for urgency, you might need an instant response for this. We have a set up our private chat server to even provide support through Skype. 
okay? Remember, we are not a team of kids hackers. We have reputations to keep. Maximum time frame is two days, and the best privacy and confidentiality. So for example, Facebook hacking, email hacking, web database hacking. These are people that are apparently leaving reviews, January 12th, 2021. So these people are not proper English speaking people, but they're saying is like, hey, I only have somebody's Instagram account and their Twitter account. So I'm trying to find their phone number. I mean, yeah, a hacker can definitely do that. A hacker can basically do some reverse engineering with these social platforms like Instagram and Twitter, and they could probably most certainly pull up your phone number. Interesting request from Zoa. Dave says, I need a hack iPhone. So I can imagine Dave over here found an iPhone that is locked or probably stole an iPhone that is locked. And he wants to break into this iPhone that is locked right now. However, Apple has set up a pretty secure system where they have made locked iPhones basically worthless. It's better to just take apart the phone or just smash the phone than to try to even use the phone or resell the phone. A locked iPhone is useless. If you stole a locked iPhone, it's worthless. That's why Apple did a really good job at that. Apple basically made thieves not want to steal iPhones anymore. If you're getting held up, they tell you to put your hands up in the air, give them your stuff or whatever. If you give them an iPhone, they're not going to want it anymore because it's going to be locked and it's going to track them, which is pretty interesting because it's a thousand dollar device. People would rather take a baseball cap, you know? Anyways, there's another piece page over here, the social hacker. I want you guys to take a look at the social hacker over here. Welcome to social hacker. Do you want to hack your girl's messenger? Or maybe you want to hack your boss's emails. We will do it in one day. We can also hack the databases of almost any site. Of course, we'll not be able to hack Amazon or eBay, but more than 80% of the sites will be hacked in a few days. We also offer a unique service. Copy the SIM card by phone number. Copy the phone number of your girlfriend and log into any social network of hers. Basically, look, hacking Instagram, $199. Hacking Facebook, $200. WhatsApp, $200. Telegram, $200. Somebody's Discord. Hacking somebody's Discord page costs $99 on the dark web. Tell me that is not freaking terrifying. A lot of people are using Discord now. If somebody went onto the deep Mart and message the social hacker, then they could apparently hack into somebody else's Discord. That's absolutely insane. According to this website, you can also hack someone's Steam account. Like if you guys don't know what Steam is, it's a gaming platform. You can also hack somebody's emails. You have to be a little bit more specific about that. Gmail and Yahoo have different servers, different hacking methods. I think it's kind of fake, but let's click see more. These are people's reviews. Everybody's leaving five stars. Are you kidding me? This person left four stars. I think I, I think it's absolute crap. Work time, 24 to 48 hours. What do you think? Is this a scam? Is it not a scam? Let me know in the comment section what you think or if you... If you if you tried it, I don't, I don't know. I don't recommend trying it. Don't try it. But if you have, let me know. There's also this website here. Trusted group of experienced hackers. Website server hacking, a smartphone attack, an SQLI database clone. I don't even know what any of those words are, but that's the explanation here. There are situations when your smartphone is lost or stolen, or if you need to get into the device of someone else like your partner or your child in order to get complete remote monitoring about their activities, photos and messages, and much, much more much more than you would want to select a smartphone attack. That's scary. And then this is the basic server hacking where you hack a website or hack a server, a DDoS attack or something like that. But yeah, I want you guys to let me know in the comment section. What do you think? Finding a hacker on the deep and dark web? Is it a scam? Is it legit? I really want you guys to let me know what your opinions are. Now that's all with level one of the dark web. That's not that bad. It's going to get pretty freaking messed up as we move forward in the video. Now moving on to level two of the horrifying levels of the dark web, we are going to be talking about government officials. Now the government officials and the whistleblowers can kind of tie together because there are some government officials that do the whistleblowing, you know, that's where a lot of the whistleblowing comes from, the people that are within the government. However, what do I mean by that? I mean that you can get actual documents. There's people that work for, for example, the American government, the Canadian government, the Australian government, the UK government, where you can get documentation for these countries. For example, so you can get passports, ID cards, driver's license. That's, that's freaking insane. Passports. Let's go on passports. The Australia passport, Belgium passport, Canada passport, which by the way, yes, yeah, that's what a Canada passport looks like. If you guys are from one of these countries, for example, if you're from Australia, tell me, is that the Australian passport? Or if you're from Belgium, is that the Belgian passport? I know definitely that's the Canadian passport over here. That's definitely a photo by somebody. Oh wow, this is a legitimate photo. That's the same hand in all three photos. Okay, that's a little creepy. Finland passport, let me know if that's the Finland passport. The France passport, let me know. Germany, Italy, Ireland's passport. You can get an Ireland passport for 600 
$600? That's insane. What about the United States of America? The USA is the USA. Is it that easy to get an American license just going on the dark web? And they have a USA passport for $700. A Malaysian passport. Netherlands passport. I really want to go to the Netherlands. I want to go to Amsterdam really badly. Norway passport. All these countries. Now, I want you guys to take a look at all of the passports on the screen. Rep your country. Say, yes, crypto. I'm from Belgium and that is the Belgium passport. Or I'm from the United States and this is the American passport because I only know what the Canadian passport looks like. Not going to lie. Uh, just please let me know. But yeah, you can get IDs too. You can get identification cards, an Australian ID card, a Canada ID card, $300 for a fake ID or a legit. I think these are legitimate IDs because if you take a look over here, if I go on to frequently asked questions, there are no visible or detectable differences from the original documents. Passports we produce successfully pass all existing tests, UV test, MRZ test, machine check, and so on. Is this legal? They didn't answer the question really, but they said we always affix the valid numbers on your new documents so you can use your documents without any problems. That scares the living crap out of me. The fact that official documents can be issued on the dark web for just paying anything as little as $300. That's freaking terrifying, man. I don't condone doing any of this. I know there's some people that are really, really desperate to get down into these countries, but do it the legitimate way. There are people that do it the legitimate way and they don't bump into any problems. If you try to cheat your way through the system, you're going to be spending the rest of your life hiding. I don't recommend it. I don't condone it. Just do everything properly if you want to come down into these countries. You know, there's people that are fighting to do it. Do what you possibly can, you know? There's permanent residences. Canadian permanent residents. Oh my God. Germany, United States, UK, Italian. That's freaking terrifying. A USA permanent resident card, a green card. UK permanent residents, Spanish permanent residents. That's messed up. On the dark web, you can also find a lot of legal cases. On this one here, you can find absolutely every single case. For example, you can click United States. Now it's gonna ask you which region of the United States. For example, we can hit New York court cases here. And it's gonna also ask you which court, New York Court of Appeals. Okay, it gives you all of the results here, all the court cases, 113 people. I'm not gonna be showing any of these people's court cases. I know they're on the public domain right now, but why put it in the video? Why put people on blast like that? But I'm just letting you know that there are legal cases on the dark net. Basically, almost every legal case, if not every legal case for every country, within a time frame, a certain time frame, you can find it. There's India here. If you click India, there's 499,000. We click India. And this is the court case for Ali Hussein versus financial commissioner. Now, a big problem on the dark net that a lot of people seem to Face when they try to purchase something on the dark net, whether it's a mystery box, whether you're trying to get these fake identifications, which I don't condone, but there are people that are desperate, you know, and they go chatting with somebody online and they say, hi, I want to hack my girlfriend Instagram account. They give them a bunch of information about themselves and they end up getting scammed. Uh, the next thing we're going to be talking about is scammers. Scammers are the cancer of the internet. Basically, I hate scammers. I know a lot of you guys can relate where you guys have been scammed one time. I... I absolutely hate scammers. I hate them with a passion. Duct Cleaning Services has been calling my household ever since I was six years old. The same voices have been calling. My parents would answer the phone. Hi, Duct Cleaning Services. Every week since I was six years old. We moved from Mississauga to Windsor. I moved in this house. We still get calls from that very same voice if we would like duct cleaning services. I almost want to invite them to the house to like look them in the eye and be like, look what you done to me. Look at these eye bags. Anyways. Anyways, if you go on to Raptor, which Raptor is one of the easiest sites you can find, you can simply go on to onion.ws. And on onion.ws, there's a bunch of links. You can just go on Raptor and it's gonna take you to the Raptor website. There's gonna be a bunch of links here. If you go here and click on scammers, these are gonna give you all of the websites, all the markets that you don't ever wanna use your Bitcoin on the dark net. Because again, we can't get our Bitcoin back. And if you were to send it to Ghostbusters with a Z, well, you would have lost your Bitcoin because vendors, private shops or fake markets listed in red below are allegedly slash actually scams. Remember their names. If they are still active, just ignore them. But an exit scam, for example, an exit scam is something that comes across as legitimate for a very long time. They collect users, collect users, collect users, collect money, collect users, and then they run off with everything exit scamming. So all of these were established companies on the dark net where people were actually using them. There were probably hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Bitcoin moving between these sites. The owners of these sites decided to exit scam with all of the Bitcoin in the server. 
That is absolute poison on the dark net and it's it's the worst thing to possibly happen in any of these marketplaces. But some people think like if people were stupid enough to use these marketplaces, then they are rightfully so deserved to lose their Bitcoin. So that's scammers, you know, scammers are absolutely everywhere. If you want to not get scammed on the dark web, my best recommendation is starting off on the hidden wiki. Literally on the hidden wiki, there is something called introduction points. Every hidden wiki has this. I don't have to recommend any particular one. You can go on DuckDuckGo, type in hidden wiki and go from there. But on every hidden wiki, there is going to be introduction points. This is going to teach you how to use the dark net. Don't let me teach you how to use the dark net. This is like 45 minutes worth of reading and you will have like expert knowledge on how to navigate properly and safely on the dark web. This is the introduction point to how to navigate on the dark web. Now that is all with level two of the horrifying levels of the dark web. It's time to get really freaking scary and move on to level three of the dark web by talking about Hitman services. Hitman services are absolutely riddled on the dark net. Since the dark net is an anonymous way to use the internet, there's a lot of people, murderers, that go on the dark net, they make a really crappy coded website. Remember, these are murderers, not website programmers, but they make these crappy websites where they say, hey, pay me some Bitcoin, give me some information, and I will do a hit. Now, what makes this so freaking scary is that hatred is a very common thing. It takes the enough amount of hatred and enough money <laughs> and basically some knowledge of navigating on the dark web. And you can log on to this site, send somebody Bitcoin, and they will take care of the job for you. And when I mean take care of the job, I mean make somebody disappear that you don't want in the world anymore. Say what you want, but humans can get pretty freaking nasty. And this is this is really terrifying. But this website over here is not actually the place to buy the hitman. This is actually recommending different hitmen websites and the reason why I pick this is if you take a look at it there is a reputation meter. This one here is internet killers. The average price for a murder on internet killers is $5,000 to $9,000. They've been online for four years. And according to this website over here, Hitman Services 2021, this reputation is great. Clearly the best and largest higher Hitman service around top quality and affordable prices. Shot and run murder of the average person costs $5,000 while killing an important person that is armed or has bodyguards can go up to $60,000 depending on target target difficulty. Then there is the Mexican hitman. This is the Sinaloa cartel. They're messed up. This is terrifying. The cheapest hitman service around. Prices between $4,000 up to several thousand dollars. USA, Europe, Canada, Australia, Japan, and China. $1,000 for India, Pakistan, and similar countries. That's terrible. And the fact that it says reputation good. Who tested this? That's my question. Who freaking tested these services? I'm not gonna sit down and ignore the fact that there are actually hitmen services. There are actually people that hire for hits. You know that, right? This stuff actually happens. The rich people pay people that have nothing to lose to do a hit, but finding it on the dark web for anybody and everybody, that's terrifying. I thought you had to have a plug, uh, some connections. But then over here, this reputation poor on Hitman Connect. I'm gonna show you guys all of these websites here. So hire a hitman. If I go to prices, well, let's see what pops up. Oh my God. By shoot and run, 5,000 to 10,000. By making it look like an accident or a robbery gone wrong, 9,000 to 20,000. By sniper, 20,000 to 60,000. Beating, 2,000 to 4,000. Isn't that harder? Arson, minimum 4,000. Kidnapping is 5,000, average 30,000. That is freaking messed up. The reason why this scares me and the reason why they have a good reputation is because there's a register and sign in button. September 12th, 2021 arson beating in the uk bro this is messed up then this is the one that had a poor reputation they have a lot of typos in this paragraph here you can take a look there at the account how many typos you can find in the paragraph let me know in the comment section they spelled assassination wrong <laughs> as assassination <laughs> 15 to twenty-five thousand dollars, and you guys can't even spell right bro this website was created with artist theater <laughs> i don't know why i find that so funny paralyzing somebody costs three to eight thousand dollars bro that's terrible. Depriving of vision. Why don't you just say blinding? You guys know how to spell depriving? Is that how you spell depriving? 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 I don't know. Depriving of vision. You guys don't know how to spell assassination. The most expensive thing they offer is a poison attack or torture. Severe torture. Then Dark Mamba also has a poor reputation. Apparently 30. $30,000 for a hit? Encrypted email. Oh my God. All of those email services on the dark web that say like, hey, email me for, for a hit, man. You have to email me for one. Those people that say that, I don't trust them. Look at this. Important people without bodyguards. Very important people with bodyguards. 
big boss with many bodyguards. <laughs> I mean, I think you guys are starting to get the point. Those are three simple websites out of thousands of websites that claim that you can hire a hitman on the dark web. Hey, it's me again. Just listen to what he has to say really, really quickly and I'll get right back to the video. It's gonna be like 10 seconds, I promise. Please turn your playback speed to 25% and turn on closed captioning. If you don't do this, then none of this video will make any sense at all. Hitman on the dark web is pretty freaky if it is legitimate. The fact that this website over here has a reputation meter and they're giving this website here, Internet Killers, a great reputation, that's terrifying. That's terrifying because that would mean somebody would have to, to leave a review, you have to try the product. So somebody definitely left a review here after trying the product and left a great reputation. Somebody was willing to pay $30,000 apparently. Oh, look at this. This is a known scam. Hire a killer is known scam. Interesting. So they're telling you the ones that are known scams. I, like I said, there's thousands of these websites, but the ones at the top are apparently great reputation. Now, my question is, what if the people that made the internet killer site are the people that made this review site? What if they're just trying to scam you saying, oh yeah, the best service is this website. Go to this website. But little does anybody know they're the same people that made that website. I don't know. Hitman on the dark web. Let me know what you guys think. Is it a scam? Is it legitimate? What do you think? The next thing on level three of the horrifying levels of the deep and dark web, we are going to be talking about dealers. Now, when I'm talking about dealers, I'm talking about these two types of dealers. Drug dealers, for example. Yeah, they're all over the dark net. I'm not going to be showing many of those. I'm going to be showing you guys the places, the markets. I'm not going to show you guys the websites because YouTube's really cracking down on those videos. But these are all markets here that apparently house this type of thing. So yeah, apparently they're established markets. I'm not saying Raptor is a reputable website, but Raptor has been on the dark net for a really long time. Like all of the OGs that browse in the dark web, they go on Raptor to see like all the news and they see all the links, which ones are scams, all the updated links too. For example, some links could be expired and they want to find out how to get on the cartel market. The cartel market is new apparently, but if they want to find out how to get on the cartel market that they've been hearing about lately, they go on to Raptor and they will find it there. If cartel market were to ever pull off a exit scam, then you can go on to the scammer section and you will probably see them there. That's good though. That's really, really good that they have a scammer section to notify people like you and me, which markets are scams, you know? I don't even want to show scams in the video. I know there's people that actually want to use these sites to get stuff. I don't condone that. My point is I just want to make a good video on YouTube and I'm not trying to show websites that are that are fake or are scams. You know, what's the point of doing that? But you can definitely find these type of dealers on the dark web. But the other type of dealers you can find are money dealers. What the heck is a money dealer? You might ask crypto. Credit cards on the dark web, PayPal accounts on the dark web, money transfers, Western unions. All these people are claiming to have credit cards. You've seen it everywhere. You've seen it in comment sections on YouTube videos. You've seen scammers on my channel saying, oh, message me on WhatsApp for a free credit card or a free PayPal. That stuff is absolute crap. But there are websites that are worth noting because Deep Market, for example, Deep Market has very, very interesting reviews. There's some people that say, wow, okay, like I got what I requested on Deep Market. But there's some people that don't get what they requested on Deep Market. That's where it becomes like, is it a scam? Is it not a scam? What do you think? I don't know. For example, for carding, there's Platinum. I'll show you guys the Platinum vendor. Let's see what they offer. Offer. A Visa online card with 3,000 US dollars cost $100. This is what I'm talking about. This is freaky. If you send them $109 worth of Bitcoin, they will send you a Visa online card with $3,000 in it. Bruh. If we're talking stocks right now, like stock investors, they invest in tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some people just put in a hundred dollars. When they get a 5% return, a 7% return, they're happy. $109 to $3,000 is a 2,800% increase. A 2,800% increase. Now, you, you show this person to a stock investor, they're gonna say that's a scam. The only way this type of stuff happens in the stock market or in cryptocurrency is with extreme buzz, fear, uncertainty and doubt or FOMO or pump and dumps. These are all the things that causes people to get this type of return with cryptocurrency and stock markets. When it comes to saying, hey, give me 109 and I'll give you 3000. That's where it gets a little unbelievable. But their argument is saying, if we use this card and we keep using these cards, we're putting ourselves in danger. So we're going to take your anonymous Bitcoin and give you these scary unanonymous credit cards because you can probably do some scary 
scary unanonymous things with these credit cards and they just want your anonymous currency so they apparently have access to get these cards they just don't want to use them to put themselves at risk so they're risking other people's safety original card by email 60 minutes so the question is are you going to get the card in the email in 60 minutes or did you just lose 109 us dollars worth of bitcoin some people don't mind trying that out some people wouldn't step near it with a 50 foot pole i am not going to go near it with 50 foot pole for multiple reasons there are people that are really desperate but those people i don't think they can just take 109 dollars and throw it away like that so this is really scary this is either like you do something stupid or you do something that probably helps you out a lot i don't know but for example then there is the paypal mafia paypal mafia is entirely the same thing but instead of offering you credit card numbers mastercards and visas they are offering you paypal accounts login details and look at this, a PayPal balance of $300 to $399 for 79 bucks. That's, that's so stressful to read it. Look at this. If you want a PayPal transfer with $3,500, which I can imagine if you pay them $350 and you actually got a PayPal account with $3,500, don't forget PayPal is not anonymous. You're going to use this for probably buying gift cards anonymously. I don't know. I don't know. Why would people use this? PayPal is not anonymous at all. PayPal is like almost, almost government. It's regulated like crazy. I don't know, man. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. What do you think about these type of dealers and these type of dealers? What do you think about the third level of the dark web because it is time to move on to the final level level four of the deep and dark web the first thing that we're going to be talking about i found tons of websites i'm going to be showing you guys blurred images but we're going to be talking about cannibals there are a bunch of cannibals on the dark net there's some forums where these people gather up and they give recipes they share recipes for cooking up their favorite human cuisines they say what type of spices that i've seen these forms i've been kicked out of these forms because my ip kept changing and i've been kicked out of these forms before because I was trying to make a good video out of it, but I didn't stay more than two minutes inside. I've seen a couple of the titles on the forums. I've also seen a couple of websites where they're listing ingredients. I'm not going to be sharing that in this video because again, like I said, this is YouTube, but interesting fact to know that there is a lot of cannibals on the dark web that they gather together and they love to discuss about it because I can imagine that being a cannibal, you don't really like discussing this type of stuff with people, right? So you go on the dark web and you find like-minded people that are also messed up in the head and you communicate with them you share recipes just like cooking channels but different <laughs> cannibals on the dark web absolutely gross it makes my stomach turn so i'm taking a look on the screen over here and this is one of the forums where they share a lot of the recipes and they share a lot of the pictures as well and i don't want to look at it for far too much but yeah this is one of the forums where they talk about sharing recipes and they post a lot of very gruesome pictures and i have a really bad fear of blood this is the fear of blood this is the name of it <laughs> Yeah, that's absolutely nasty. That's the second last thing that we're gonna talk about on the horrifying levels of the dark web. And unfortunately, the last thing that I have to mention in this video because these these people are everywhere. These people are absolutely everywhere. I don't even wanna say what they are. I don't think I'm allowed to say what they are, so this is what it is. You will find these type of people absolutely everywhere on the dark net. This is where the problem lies, where you're doing simple browsing. You're typing in, oh, for example, I want to find push pins. You go on the dark web and you type in push pins on the dark web and it says, hey, buy push pins here. If you click on the buy push pins here link, it will navigate you to a pretty bad website, an illegal website. So what you have to do when you're browsing the dark web, browsing the internet, and you come across any of these websites that have any of these people on it, then you're gonna have to go to the proper internet authorities, copy and paste the links. There's the FBI.gov, for example, and you can just anonymously report all of this and take care of it all anonymously, you know, because that's your job to do. You have to report absolutely everything. You can go on to FBI.gov and submit a tip on there. And literally, if you don't do it, I'm pretty sure you're breaking the law. I take note of the link and I report it to this link over here. But yeah, you're going to find those people absolutely everywhere on the dark web. Which brings us to the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you truly enjoyed this video, I'm going to ask you from the bottom of my heart, actually subscribe to the channel. You will be recommended future videos. I pinky promise tomorrow you'll wake up, you'll come on YouTube and you'll see my channel pop up. Make sure you hit the like button because it really helps out us content creators and if you actually like the video put the like button if you didn't like it for whatever reason dislike button down too thank you ladies and gentlemen for making it this far into the video thank you so much for spending your time with me here today and until next time ladies and gentlemen i will see you in the future and remember to stay off the dark web